Zechariah chapter 13. <clears throat> Again, I, I say it often because I say things that I have been involved since I've been saved in 1987. From the second day that I got saved, I began witnessing about Jesus. And I bring up everything I've learned, everything I've heard. And I have heard few people say, well, I don't read the Old Testament. I had one person say, well, I read my songs. That's it. That's good enough for me. We're running into Zechariah chapter 13, which I don't even know if half the Christians out there today know there's a Zechariah. And Zechariah 13 is loaded. And if you mark your Bible like I do and color code your Bible like I do, you you look down and it's like, whoa, what is that? And Zechariah 13 has to be color coded. As we go into Zechariah 13, we get one aspect of the Bible. The Bible is not in chronological order. Sometimes it is out of place, out of date, out of time. And there is a Bible which which I know how much it is. I have been told it is well, and I, I have not examined it myself. But I am told that there's a Bible on the market where it actually puts everything in order. Now how well it does it, and I've seen them in the King James Version. But I can't say yay or nay. In that day, we looked at that last night, and in that day, 115 times in 112 verses. Isaiah has the most at 43 verses. There shall be a fountain open. There is a fountain open. You recognize that hymn? Can I tell you what's wrong with that hymn? It's a beautiful hymn. We sing it in the Baptist churches. Well, not a lot of Baptist churches today. There is a fountain open to the house of David, to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Doctrinally, it's to Israel. Now, we can spiritualize that. It, it would not go beyond changing the scriptures, changing the replacement theology. In that day shall be a fountain open. That fountain is Jesus Christ, the blood. But do they see Calvary? To the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin. And for uncleanness. All right, for sin and uncleanness, that is a recognized term in the law. You would have to bring a sacrifice, an animal sacrifice. But after Jesus suffers and dies and is buried and rose again, that's it. There's no more animal sacrifice. And it shall come to pass. That's another thing. It shall come to pass. When God says it comes to pass, it will. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will cut off the names of the idols out of the land. Well, let me ask you something. In Jerusalem, in Israel, the land today, do they have rock concerts? Do they have movie stars? Sports stars? Because those are idols too. I know a preacher. The only time he'll ever wear a tie is an orange tie for his football team. That's an idol. An idol is an, is an object that you worship more than God. It could be cash, check, money order. It could be knickknacks, patty wags, classic wood, stone... Whatever it is that you seek, 
Stocks and bonds are a great idol. Jobs, cars, and all the idols will be kicked out of the land because we'll see in a moment. There's Jesus, and they shall no more be remembered. Amen. Glory to God. I'm going to suppose most of the worldly idols today. If they are a human, American Idol, I don't think you're, no, I can't say they're not going to be saved, but I don't think you're going to find them in heaven. And if we do find them in heaven, if they are saved, well, the Bible says we're going to get a new name. You're not going to recognize that person's name in heaven. They shall no more be remembered. And also I will cause the prophets and the unclean spirits to pass out of the land. No more devils. When Jesus came into the land, he's casting out devils here and there and everywhere. The land of Israel in the millennium is going to be clean. I heard someone, we're going you know, we're, 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 you know, to go to the Holy Land, you can come over. That's an unholy land. After February 2022, when I saw what was going on for gay pride, lesbian pride, abominational pride of the law, don't you dare call that the Holy Land. And shall come to pass, that when any shall yet prophesy. So it didn't say that they're not going to. Is it if? No, it doesn't say if. It says when. In the millennium, somebody is going to try to prophesy. So what she'll tell you in the millennium is not to say you're not going to be without sin. Then his father and his mother that begat him shall say unto him, Thou shalt not live. Thou speakest lies in the name of the Lord. Oh man, if, if that would be for the pulpits in America today. And that would be the pulpits for the world today. Of your Baptist church. If a person in the congregation will stand and say, Hey, what you're saying is a lie. You shall not live. <laughs> The congregation will stone the one that get up and speaks the truth. Have I become your enemy because I've spoken the truth? Capital punishment for those who lie in the name of the Lord. That's one of the big ten commandments. Thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. Now you think that's cussing. Anything to do with the Lord's name that has no value. You get up and you preach a message, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And it has no value, and it has no point, and it has no growth for the Christians. It has no salvation to the lost. That's vain. And his father and his mother that beget him shall thrust him through when he prophesied to be killed by his parents. Capital punishment. What you kill your son for? He was taking the Lord's name in vain. Well, good for you. And shall come to pass in that day that the prophet shall be ashamed every one of his vision. So we're not going to have the tea leaves. We're not going to have the horoscopes. We're not going to have a bunch of women who never take care of men sitting down at a table. Well, I think somebody important this year is going to die. <laughs> when he has prophesied, past tense, neither shall they wear a rough garment to deceive. 
What they're doing is they're wearing a garment. Oh, Father. You know, you recognize certain religion by what they wear. Not in the millennium. I've seen cars, a reverend. I may not wear a suit or, or a item of clothing, but my car will tell you who I am. <clears throat> but I, I, I was in the hospital one time, and I was visiting my wife, and and we were in, got in an elevator, and, and this man all dressed in black, and his his collars on backwards. They're all high fall, they're high fall. They look at me, aren't you going to address them? I said, Sir, your collar's backwards. Blasphemy. You're going to speak to him like that? I said, Do you know who I am? No. Well, that's the way he should be. The Lord knows who I am. He's got to put that monkey suit on and look at the door dang open. I got out. But he shall say, I am no prophet. I am a husbandman. For men taught me to keep cattle from my youth. Now we have an illustration of that in the Bible, a type, Amos. Amos chapter 7, we talked about Amos a long time ago. Amos 7.14, 777. Then answer Amos and said unto Amaziah, I was no prophet. Neither was I a prophet's son, but I was a the herdman, a gatherer of sycamore fruit. God sent a prophet with the truth to say, hey, in a millennium, scripture was scripture. I don't read the Old Testament. You gotta be ready to rightly divide. Verse 6. And one shall say unto them, Where are these wounds in thy hand? And he shall answer, Those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. Look at John. The Gospel of John 20. Scripture with Scripture. John 20. Verse 25. 24. But Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. When he said unto them, Except ye shall see the hand of and the prints of the nails, and put my finger in the print of the nails, and thrust my hand in his side, I will not believe. Well, you know, Thomas wasn't there, and he missed the blessing. Maybe nobody offered Thomas a ride to get there. Maybe Thomas didn't have a way to get there. Maybe a great, friendly kind of Christians and all that, and, and, and we got so much money we want to put support, but we don't provide for people to come to church. All right. After eight days, again, disciples were with him. Thomas was with them. And then came Jesus and doors being shut. And he stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then said he, Jesus to Thomas, Reach in hither and behold my hands, reach in thither my hand, thrust it into my side. The hole is still there. The side and the hands and the feet. So that's Jesus and Zachariah. And he said, what are these wounds? I was wounded in the house of my friends. can't say he wasn't he's wounded in the house of the brethren 
John chapter 1, because he's got Jews there, he's got Gentiles there, he's got John there, he's got his mother there, he's got the women who have been faithful to him in his entire ministry. So we got the millennium. Okay? We just read Calvary. We just read the upper room with Thomas after the resurrection. And they're going to say that in the millennium. They're going to see Jesus in the millennium. <laughs> Awake, O sword, against my shepherd. We'll keep on reading. Against the man that is my fellow, saith the Lord of Smite the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. Matthew 26. Let's go find out who this is. Matthew 26. I'm picking Matthew because Matthew is a Jewish gospel written to Jews. We're in a Jewish book written to Jews. Matthew 26, 31. This is after the Lord's Supper. They're, they sang a hymn. They're going to the Gethsemane. Then answered Jesus unto them, Ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it's written, I will smite, I will, it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered. <coughs> okay, back to Zechariah. Verse 7. O sword against my shepherd, John chapter 10, against the man, behold the man. There's one meeting between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. That is my fellow, saith the Lord of hosts, smite the shepherd. Who's the shepherd? The sheep shall be scattered. Jesus has told you who that is. We're in the garden now. I know we're out of order, but do you see we're in the millennium? We're in the after the resurrection, we're in the upper room. We're on Calvary. We're in the garden. Why don't you want to read the Old Testament? How come? How come? And I'm, I got one pastor in mind right now. We read every chapter through the Bible study, through the chapter, and we've done it, I think it said three years, something like that. Three or four years. No, you know. When I was there in the church, you missed three quarters of a book. Liar. How come the people are not, because you don't make it interesting. You're in this mad rush to hurry up. Okay. Chalk up one more. And Stalin gets up there and teaches the Bible. Look, it takes forever. And they come away like, wow. I will turn my hand upon the little one. <clears throat> and it shall come to pass that in all the land, all the land, not just Israel, not just Judah, Save the Lord. Now we are in the tribulation period. Watch this. Save the Lord. Jehovah. Two parts in shall be cut off. You know that cut off for the Jew men. And die. And a third shall be left therein. In the tribulation period, by times Jacob's trouble has ended. Two thirds of the Jews will be wiped off the map. By the Antichrist. And. 
and but the third shall be left therein. I will bring the third part through the fire, through the tribulation. And some of those are going to be under the altar with their heads been removed. I will refine them as silver is refined, put through the fire. I will try them as gold is tried, put through the fire. There's a, there's a place in the Bible, I believe it's Psalms, where it speaks of the Word of God being tried and put through the fire. They shall call upon my name. I will hear them. Now we're back in the millennium. I will say it is my people. This would go for the sheep nations too because they're going through the tribulations. And they've helped the Jews. They are in the millennium. And the fire will be turned up for them. Anybody who helps and, and, and rescues the Jews. And they shall say, The Lord is my God. Zechariah 13 is full of the Gospels, New Testament, Millennium. And it's not read by your Christians. They don't even know it's in there. Now I'll tell you why Zechariah is missed by your average Baptist preacher. Because there's a lot in Zechariah where you guys say, I don't no. And many of your Baptist scholarly great preachers today that pastor a church are afraid to tell their congregation, I don't know. So instead of saying, I don't know, they have two options. They Bypass it. They miss it. Or they fill it with the Hebrew and the Greek and woo, and go over the people's heads. I've heard the preacher go in the Greek. Yeah, you know what the congregation does when you do that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They don't care. They, you're just saying, look, I got an education that you don't have. <laughs> so do I. You want to do battle? 